Hi, this is Kari Spencer from the Micro Farm Project, and I'm here today to talk to you about container gardening. I am refreshing my pots, which got a little bit crispy over the summer, planting some new things and uh, refreshing the soil in those pots, so I thought I'd show you how I do it. So today we're going to talk about two different scenarios. The first is, what do you do if you have a pot that has soil in it, but everything in that pot has, has died, so you want to put brand new plants in? How do you refresh that pot? Another scenario is that you might have a pot that some things have died and some things are still doing okay. So you don't want to disturb them, but you do want to freshen up the pot and you do want to plant something new. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Okay, I have a pot here that uh, had a plant in it, but that plant died. So now I need to plant something else. But this pot has been, um, it's had soil in it for about a year. So I think that I might need to refresh it. It looks like the soil has compacted down a little bit. It's pulled away from the edges somewhat. Uh, so when I water, the water just goes straight down the sides of the pot and doesn't actually soak into the soil. Uh, so I wanna fix that situation. Also, because it's been outside all summer long and had things growing in it, it might need a little refreshing as, par as far as nutrients are concerned, so it might need some, uh, some fertilizing. Uh, and also, since the soil is kind of hard and dry, I wanna get it moist again, bring it back to life. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this mulch off the top so that I don't accidentally mix it into the soil. Uh, then since there's nothing growing in it, there's absolutely nothing stopping me from just dumping the soil out into uh, this bucket so that I can really get it freshened up. So I'm just going to take all this soil out and we're going to put some uh, nutrient back in it. All right, so got the soil out. And now uh, when you're container gardening, you know, you want to start with a nice potting soil or you can start with equal parts compost and then add one part vermiculite. Vermiculite helps to fold moisture so that your plant, uh, your pot doesn't dry out really quickly. That's especially important for small containers that dry out fast. Uh, where I live in Phoenix in the summertime, it can happen really, really fast. If you live in a wetter climate, then maybe you can cut back the vermiculite just a little bit. Um, then you'll want to use some perlite or some pumice. I'm going to use pumice today. Pumice is a uh, volcanic rock that helps to improve drainage. We don't want our pots to get um, too sopping wet. We want water to drain away when we don't need it <coughs> and we want to hold moisture when we do need it. Now I'm coughing a little bit because really these uh, soils can sometimes kick up a lot of dust and it's very dry. All right, so now I want to make sure that I get it wet. And sometimes it takes more water than you think it's going to. I'm gonna stir that around, let it absorb the moisture while I talk to you a little bit about the plants that I have here today. Um, I am, this is the cool season for us, so I am planting lettuces and um, onions and things that grow during cool season. Um, so in this pot, I think that this is just about the right size for this nice lettuce mix that I picked up at Arcadia Color Gardens this morning. All right, so let's get some soil back in here. really mix it up. I left some of the soil in the pot. I want to mix it up with the fresh soil. Actually want to put a little bit of worm castings in there. I will provide some nutrient for these lettuces. I'm just going to throw a handful in. All right, then you want to make a hole that is just as deep and twice as wide as the root ball. So let's take a look at the root ball of this plant. Here's the root ball. Oh, this is nice. You can see that there's plenty of root here. 
to hold the soil together, but not so much that the roots are circling and circling around. But I do want to rough it up a little bit on the sides, like this. Put it in my planting hole, make sure that it makes good contact with the soil. I don't want to push it down really hard, but I do want to firm it in a little bit so that there's no air pockets underneath there. All right, then I'm going to go around this plant and fill in the soil so it's nice and level and even. I don't want the plant root ball to be sticking up higher than the soil in the pot. Um, otherwise, it will wick away moisture. Also, when I water, it will run to the sides and drain down the sides of the pot and it won't even absorb into the soil and over time that will erode the soil. So let's keep it nice, nice and level inside this pot. So now that I've got that tucked in, notice that there's a lot of kind of empty space around this lettuce. And it's a fairly good size pot. So what can I do? I, you know, I really don't like to waste space in my garden. Uh, so I'm going to actually grab a couple of onion sets here. And uh, get this bag open and put a few onions around. Now, onions might not be the very best thing to put around a lettuce. I could put some flowers around it instead, um, but I don't think it's really going to hurt. So I'm going to put those onion, onions down uh, with the root side down and the stem side up about an inch, inch and a half down in the soil around the edges of this lettuce. And those onions aren't expected to get really big anyway, so they're not going to bother the lettuce at all. All right, then I'm going to go around and take off some of these old leaves on this lettuce. I probably damaged a little bit of the roots as I was planting it out. So since some of the roots came off, I wanna take some of the top off so that the uh, new roots can grow and the ones that are there don't have to work quite so hard to get nutrition and water to the plant. Let me water it a little bit, just see if any of this soil settles before I add more of the mulch. All right, All right that looks pretty good. So let's put the mulch on. And this guy is beautiful. It'll look lovely on my patio. And uh, it'll create food for us. Now, I do not put rocks in the bottom of my pots. I cover the holes with, uh, with a piece of just a coffee filter. Um, what I do with rocks is I like to put the rocks on a dish underneath my plants so that uh, it protects my patio and the water can drain away from the plant. Excess water can actually drain away from the plant. So, I will put this pot on top of this plate with the rocks on it and we'll be all set. So let me move this out of the way and show you the other scenario. Um, I don't want to take these out. They're doing just fine, but uh, there is some dead stuff in here that's not looking so good. So again, I'm going to take off the mulch. So I don't want to mix woody mulch into the soil. It's just meant to be a blanket on top of the soil. All right, so in this case, in this container, I'm going to take out the dead plants. I'm actually just going to cut them off, put them in the compost. And these have gotten really tall and gangly, these uh, paint brushes. So I'm just going to pick a spot and just cut them. And maybe they'll come back a little bit bushier, a little bit prettier, actually. Same thing with this vinca. Let's just trim it up a little bit, see what comes back. All right, so now I've got this, these empty spots in the container. Um, and I want to plant things without disturbing the roots of the other plants. So one thing that you could do is just plant some seeds. Okay, so that's a good 
option because that does not disturb the roots of the other plants. However, if you want to transplant something, and I've got some uh, absolutely gorgeous petunias here that I want to put in this pot, then you just kind of need to dig around and be as careful as you can about not disturbing the roots of the other plants. Now, obviously you can't make sure that no roots get damaged when you're digging down in the soil uh, because the roots go all over the pot. But since I've cut them back a little bit, then they will not need to work so hard to get nutrient to the plant and they can have a little bit of time to grow. So what I want to do is grab some more of these worm castings and just kind of rough them down in there. I'm just using my fingers to kind of disturb the soil and rough them, rough them in. I think I'll add a little bit um, more vermiculite and pumice. I don't put a lot of pumice in hanging baskets because they tend to dry out really fast anyway. Um, but definitely put the vermiculite in. And just kind of move that around a little bit just in the first top few inches of soil. All right, then I'm gonna turn this guy upside down, take it out, rough it up a little bit, make a hole in the soil, pop it in there, cover it back up. Let's do a couple more. All right, mulch in there. Tuck it in. Now the last thing that I want to do, since I did not get the soil wet in the bucket like I did with the other pot, I want to water it in, get it really wet. Those are the basics of refreshing your container pots. It's very easy to do and it's fun. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And remember that when you are container gardening, we don't just use garden soil like we do in a garden bed. We want to make sure that we use either a potting soil mix or create our own with equal parts compost, pumice, and vermiculite. Then we want to make sure that we have a pot with a drainage hole in it and that we cover that hole with a coffee filter so that when we water, the uh, excess can run out of the bottom of the pot, but the soil doesn't run out with it. Uh, finally, you want to create a planting hole that is twice as wide and just as deep as the root ball of the transplant that you are putting into the pot and cover it with some mulch after you've planted it out. Uh, then water it in and you're all set to grow either some really gorgeous flowers or some delicious food. So I wish you all the best in your gardening endeavors. If you'd like to get a list of container gardening soil mix recipes, go to bit.ly slash soil mix recipes. This is Kari Spencer from the Micro Farm Project. Grow great.